my pleasure to be here, gentlemen. Um, you have a, a, a project at least captioned uh, is very um, imaginative and uh, challenging, reconciliation. I was very privileged to serve as uh, Dr. King's personal lawyer and one of his um, uh, principal draft speechwriters, but more in a role of a strategic advisor. Reconciliation. Reconciliation, of course, uh, uh, assumes that there's been some sort of uh, confrontation or struggle prior to reconciliation. I can think of no more intriguing and historically teaching a subject than a discussion of the anti-apartheid movement in South Africa under the leadership of the ANC and Nelson Mandela and the uh, struggle for civil rights in America led uh, principally, not exclusively, by the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. The brilliance of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. is he was not only committed to nonviolence, first of all, deeply. It wasn't a tactic. It wasn't a, it wasn't a gimmick. It was a part of his philosophical basis. But part of that philosophy was brilliant political pragmatism. Okay? So we would have to say to our well-intentioned black brothers and sisters who would either directly or indirectly want to imply that by armed struggle uh, that we could change the system, we would have to say, you were counseling suicide. We would have to say outright, flatly, okay, under the most optimistic set of circumstances. It is unlikely in our lifetime in this struggle that 11% of the population is going to overthrow 89% that controls the power. We knew that our challenge in terms of political organization was to develop a majority of support in the majority population because we knew that once we could do that, then we didn't need guns and bullets. We didn't need arms. Okay. We only need the power of the indignation of the majority population to say, not in our name. White America was not willing to face the television sets every night and the front page of the newspapers and to see policemen uh, uh, beating up young black and white kids. I, I do want to, I want to talk about the inspirational um, leadership of the anti-apartheid struggle on uh, Martin Luther King and those of us in the civil rights movement. I have to assume that there may have been one or more moments when Nelson Mandela doubted whether or not his cause would be victorious. 27 years in prison. There was more than one time when Martin would say, he said, if Brother Mandela can endure, then we can endure. The depth of the commitment to his people that he gave his life. His commitment was so extraordinary that it became clear to the white minority that South Africa could not, would not be able to continue as a country unless he was freed. Before Nelson Mandela went to jail, yes. um, in 1960, after the Sharpeville Massacre, Sharpeville, right, right. the ANC mobilized, yes. and Nelson Mandela personally formed Mkwonto Wesizwe, the military wing. That's correct. Was it difficult for you and 
uh, Dr. King. Who were committed to, to nonviolence? To, to reconcile with the violent measures taken by this man who you've said you so admire. Right. Well, yes and no. The political conditions and circumstances in South Africa at the time were so qualitatively different than the political circumstances that we faced in America that we were not going to criticize a decision that the ANC felt they had to undertake. We were not so presumptuous as to say that the political methods of work, the political strategy and tactics that we had developed in America would be appropriate for the South Africa situation. One of the things I, uh, uh, I, have, I think that was such an extraordinary political move on the part of the anti-apartheid movement was the, uh, the National Reconciliation Commission. I thought that was absolutely brilliant. Why? Because from afar, I said that Nelson Mandela and the people in the ANC must have made a political calculation together with their allies uh, in South Africa that it would be virtually impossible for there to be, and listen to my words carefully, it would be virtually impossible for there to be a peaceful transition from an apartheid to a multiracial South Africa unless there was a mechanism for those people who had been most aggrieved, unless they had an opportunity to express their outrage and to tell their story. There are lessons for those people who want to look at the parallels, the parallels between the apartheid struggle and the civil rights struggle, those people who would be interested in that. Now this, this leads me to tell you something that, that's important for you to understand about Martin King. He deeply believed that the thing that distinguished a human being from other species in the universe hmm, was that there was something called a conscience and a soul. And he deeply believed that even the most ardent white racist segregationist, if he or she were confronted with the reality of their commitment to racism, that that would touch their soul and conscience. The high point of the civil rights movement, April and May in 1963, when the overwhelming majority of white people in America, when they saw what the police were doing in their name, okay, keeping segregation, order, keeping the status quo in their name, they said, no, 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 no. Something has got to change. We shall overcome. Since we shall